The following program is underwritten by Barlow's Clam Shack, located at 856 Scenic Highway in Bourne. Barlow's Clam Shack, where the seafood is always fresh. and welcome to the April 2024 Born Review. I'm Susan Barlow. First for some headline news and announcements. One of the most exciting and anticipated events in April was the solar eclipse that happened on May 8th. Our area had a 92% solar eclipse, but some people traveled far and wide and many from this area up to New Hampshire and Maine to get in the path of totality. It was a pretty exciting event. The Bourne Select Board's annual review of town administrator Marlene McCullum gave her a rating of 3.14 out of a possible 4 on her review April 2nd. This means she has a strong performance overall and marked an increase from her rating last year of 3.06. Highest marks were given in the area of financial management and low marks were given in the area of personnel management and organizational leadership. Although board members acknowledged that this area is difficult for them to score because they aren't involved in day-to-day -day operations of the town and do not speak with employees. Her strong overall performance rating resulted in a bonus of $3,000. Mass DOT held an update on the Cape Cod Bridges replacement program on April 25th. It was a remote meeting. Some of the big news was that you can expect a Sagamore Bridge to be operational hopefully by 2034. And the Bourne Bridge would be operational by uh, one year later, if all goes to plan. One of the major concerns for residents is the taking of land in order to complete these projects. It was announced during the Zoom meeting that uh, the taking of land would probably be decided a year from now in the spring of 2025. If you'd like to bring your uh, comments and concerns or just seek more information, they'll be having two in-person meetings at the Bourne Community Building located at 239 Main Street in Bourne on May 13th from noon to 3 and then a second session from 5 to 8 p.m. You can see Mass DOT's Zoom meeting about the bridge replacement program in its entirety by visiting bourntv.com or searching for it on our YouTube channel. There's some new faces at the Bourne Community Building Keith McGrady has been hired as the new Assistant Director of the Recreation Department and congratulations to Katie Matthews. She has been named the Permanent Director of Bourne Recreation Department. At the Council on Aging, Jill Delancey is the new Front Desk Clerk, welcoming patrons with a smile. For the annual Earth Day celebration on Saturday, April 20th, AmeriCorps, along with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, cleaned up along the canal service roads. It was a good turnout, even on a very rainy Saturday, and they collected 315 pounds of trash from the service roads along the canal. A big shout out to all that participated. Could $20 million of federal money available through ARPA funding for this project slip through Bourne's fingers? Well, discussion continues about the Bourne Rail Trail. The rail trail would connect the canal service road on the south side of the canal at the railroad bridge with the Shining Sea bike path which begins in North Falmouth and ends in Woods Hole. Mass Maritime Cadets aboard the T.S. Kennedy departed for their sea term on April 21st. 
The Kennedy is on loan from Texas A&M Maritime Academy in Galveston, Texas, because MMA's new ship, the Patriot State, won't be ready until later this summer. Speaking of ships, the Mayflower 2 came through the canal around 7 a.m. on April 11th. It was traveling from Mystic, Connecticut, where it had overwintered, back to Plymouth, where it will spend the summer. It was foggy, but that was almost more interesting and fun to see it come out of the mist and fog on the canal like a ghost ship. On Saturday, April 27th, a psychic fair was held at the Bourne Community Building to support the Bourne Food Pantry. Hundreds came to the event, many lined up for appointments with a variety of psychics. There was also a crafts and food for purchase. Former DPW director Sean Patterson has withdrawn from the select board race. The race is now between Mary Jane Mastrangelo, up for re-election, uh, and current planning board member Jean Azarovitz, and Daniel Deegan, Sean Patterson's nephew, and John McDonald. All are running for two spots. Have you been wondering what's going on at the former go-kart building on MacArthur Boulevard? There's been a lot of clearing of land, and some were hopeful it might be a new grocery store coming to town. But no, the building will house a granite countertops and fabrication business. The trial of ex born select board member James Potter is set for July 15th in Barnstable Superior Court. Charges against him include three counts of indecent assault and battery on a child under the age of 14, two counts of aggravated rape of a child, and three counts of rape. He has pled not guilty. Here's what's happening downtown. The new Lebanese restaurant called Grill and More has opened. It's located at 340 Main Street, attached to the gas station across from Starbucks. The restaurant will feature indoor and outdoor spaces and has a liquor license. Check it out. Well, we gained one and we lost one. Sadly, Shore Fire Pizza on Main Street has closed its brick and mortar location and will continue on with just its food truck business and catering business. Now for our top stories. Here are some results from town meeting held on May 6th. 226 registered voters were in attendance. Here are the results of the most notable articles. Article 10, seeking the sum of $80,000 to fund affordable housing units at 9 Sandwich Road from community preservation funds. Donald Duberger asked, why are we funding a private developer? Of the 32 rental units, eight will be affordable housing. Select Board Member Mary Jane Mastrangelo explained that in order to get developers on board with smaller housing developments that fit in better with our neighborhoods, we need to contribute funds. The article failed 94 to 121. Article 9 asked for $135,000 from historic preservation reserves to fund roof repairs to the former Hoxie School, now owned by the nonprofit Anna's Pals Beach House for immunocompromised children. Paul Ferrari, along with former select board member Judy Froman, questioned if it's appropriate to subsidize a building not owned by the town. Christina Jerome of Boston, founder of Anna's Pals, said the roof is in critical condition, and if it wasn't repaired, the building would quickly fall into disrepair. Jack McDonald, Dave Sampson, and Steve Mealy all spoke in support of the building due to its historic relevance to the town. The article passed 102 to 28. With surprisingly little discussion, Article 8 passed 99, 4, and 22 against to appropriate $500,000 for the construction of an all-wheel skate park and to redesign the softball field behind the Veterans Memorial Community Center on Main Street. Article 25 sought to amend the Bourne zoning bylaws to allow accessory dwelling units by right meaning that one wouldn't have to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals and get a special permit. 
The article passed 167 for and 21 opposed, with almost no discussion. Now, in Bourne, one ADU, or accessory dwelling unit, is permitted as a by-right use to a lawful single-family use on the same lot, so long as you have met several requirements, septic or sewer capacity, a parking space, a minimum lot size of 5,000 square feet, the maximum size of the ADU would be 1,500 square feet and could be no larger than 50% of the original single-family home. They cannot be used for short-term rentals. There is a 90-day minimum rental period. Improvements to the Bourne Rotary are wrapping up for summer and will resume in the fall. Mass DOT has widened parts of the circle and added some small traffic islands and will paint lane lines in an effort to make it safer and less of a bottleneck. Even though nearly every agency, including the Environmental Protection Agency, town leaders, county leaders, and our legislators, and probably every resident, visitor, and business relying on tourism opposes the new machine gun range on Joint Base Cape Cod, the Army National Guard continues to pursue it. It would seem that pollutants in our drinking water are the topic almost daily in this country. Cape Cod in particular is still cleaning up the Superfund site at Joint Base Cape Cod with a price tag of $1.1 billion, and they're not done with cleanup yet. New plumes of PFAS were just discovered at the base. This pollution was believed to have been caused long ago. The Environmental Protection Agency has announced first ever nationwide limits on PFAS, which stands for per and polyfluorinated substances, also called forever chemicals, because they never break down. These limits would apply to our tap drinking water. This is particularly worrisome since Cape Cod has a sole aquifer, meaning there's only one source of drinking water uh, for the Upper Cape, and it's directly beneath Joint Base Cape Cod. It would seem this would be at cross purposes now to construct a machine gun range on top of our sole source aquifer. Adding to what the EPA has determined to be a significant threat to safe drinking water. The Bourne Historical Society held its annual Daffodil Days Festival at the Museums at Uptuxet. The event was kicked off by a reception for the art project that began last year during the Daffodil Days celebration called Blooming Together. <music> I just want to say a few words of, of gratitude um, to the people that are gathered here to um, celebrate this beautiful art installation that we have here at the Joseph Jefferson Windmill. Um, it was amazing last year to have the windmill being used for what it was built to be, to be for being used as an art studio. It has had a lot of different things in here and, um, and we, you know, we weren't quite sure at the beginning of last year um, what we were going to do with this space. and. Um, and we had this beautiful community coming together of artists, um, uh, support of Mass um, Cultural Council, the support of the Bourne Community Engagement Committee, which are organizations that provided funding for us to, um, to host Daffodil Days and to, um, to actually put on this, um, this project. And we had, we had a, a few uh, wonderful artists, Emily Robinson and, and Corinne McCune from the Berkshires yeah. traveled east. <laughs> and brought us this idea of um, blooming together to ask all of our visitors to, um, to you know, create a mandala circle inspired by nature that in some way represented them. I'm Emily Robinson um, and I came here last year with my partner in art making for 2023, Corinne McCune. She and I met um, with the Medical Reserve Corps during the pandemic 
and um, got to working with uh, the organization, National Organization for Arts and Health. Um, we trained up volunteers in Berkshire County to bring art projects to the community during the pandemic. Um, really focused on the relationship between making art and improving health, both individual and community health. Um, we have had this project at four or five different organizations in Berkshire County, but we have never had an organization pick it up and run with it the way the Bourne Historical Society has. Um, so when I left here in uh, April of last year, we had two of these hanging. Mm -hmm. And in the last year, you all have filled the room with art. So each of these discs represents an individual piece of work, and together, um, they're sort of a, a community quilt of art. It's lovely to see people come in and look at the piece that they made and remember making it. Um, we love art because it opens up dialogue uh, in community and gives us ways to express ourselves other than words. And so um, by asking our visitors to do that during Daffodil Festival, we ended up with this beautiful sculpture that had over 100 circles and it was so inspiring that our site manager, Joya, decided we're not going to just bloom together during daffodil festivals, let's bloom together all season long. And so we decided to make this the project for um, the 2023 season. And as you look around, you can see that we've grown from our original 100. Um, there's over 600 um, separate mandala circles here. And each one is so unique. And each one represents what that person felt for that day. And, um, and they're all so different. And you know, one would think things that are so different might clash. But as we look around, we can see um, those differences um, um, butting up next to each other are so beautiful and it creates this, um, this wonderful tapestry for us to enjoy. Um, so a special thanks to our artists who brought this to us. Um, for the folks who helped to um, volunteer to, to make things happen, we have Jan Woods here who's you know, one of our most steadfast volunteers and um, you know, participates in all of our events and provided our delicious homemade cookies today. Um, Mary Beth Ellis, um, she really took this project under her wing last year. <laughs> um, and you know, always was like, if I'll be there on Thursday to, at the windmill, we really, it can be so tough to come up with volunteers to do things. And so to have somebody who be, could be committed to, to being here, to welcome visitors and to facilitate this, um, this project for, for, for folks. And we were very lucky during Daffodil Festival to meet and connect with somebody who became a new employee who also has put her heart and soul I look around here and I think of this person and that's Emmalyn Smith who's here today and she's um our newest and youngest employee, and Emma Lynn was somebody that I could always rely on to be here to facilitate um, this project, and also she did a lot of, um, of getting the, the, the individual circles all ready to be hung up. So, so Emma Lynn, thanks for being here, and thanks for all the work that you did on this project. Um, as always, we have our, our, um, our, our Diane Flynn, our ever-present, wonderful, um, the backbone of the organization, making sure we've got something to eat and drink, so um, Diane's always always here in the background making things easy for us. So, so thank you everybody for being here, for helping us celebrate. And um, this is, we're gonna, we've decided we're gonna keep blooming together. Yes. 2024. Um, if, you if you didn't get a chance yeah. to come in and contribute to this project, for 2024, this space will be set up as an art studio again, just the way it was meant to be, just the way it was last year. This place was full of, of laughter and happiness and, um, and good feelings. And Emily's not just an artist, she's a nurse. And so part of what she taught us when she taught us to facilitate this project was the act of sitting down and creating a piece of art is healing um, for the artist. And um, even if you're bad at it, and almost probably especially if you're bad at it, because if you think you're bad at art, you're not doing a lot of it. Um, but, um, but so we had a lot of people um, healing, getting some good, good feeling chemicals, dopamine and serotonin, um, natural uh, antidepressants by, by doing this. So we welcome folks to come in and contribute to this, this um, project for um, 2024. And if you didn't get a chance to see, if, you, if, you, if somebody um, actually um, created a circle and ha haven't seen it yet, we welcome you to come into the windmill and see that your art is hanging in a museum. So thanks everybody. Thanks for helping us make this opening fun. Here's an update on town services. The Bourne Recycling Center is asking that you do not include any hoses, ropes, or any items that can cause tangling in the recycling machinery. 
please re either repurpose those items or put them in the trash. Also at the Recycling Center, you can recycle your boat shrink wrap from April 1st through June 30th. There's no fees or stickers required. Residents can participate free of charge, but make sure your recycling wrap is properly prepared for recycling. Let's keep plastic wrap and plastic waste out of our waters and conserve our valuable landfill. On May 28th, Ice Swim changes to its summer schedule and will be open seven days a week, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Bourne Recreation Department is offering volleyball with Coach Cassie grades 3 through 7 on Thursdays, May 9th through the 30th, held at 4.30 p.m. in the Community Center Gym. The cost is $40. They're also offering tennis lessons with Coach Chris starting July 8th at the Bourne High School Tennis Courts. It's a five-week program running Monday through Thursday. These are lessons for children from six years old through 14 years old. It's $60 for residents and $72 for non-residents. For more information and to register, go to bornrec.com. Here's what's happening at the library. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Hi. How are you doing today? Hey, hey, Nicholas. Great to see you. Kathy. Hi. Welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to be back. Yeah. All kinds of good things going on here while I was gone. You guys have done a great job. But we missed you. We oh, did. Well, thank you. Yeah. It's nice we to managed to carry on. You yeah. did. You did yeah. a great job, and we're packed with things to talk about today. I would say the one big thing that's coming up in May is, yes, my favorite day of the year. Mother's Day? No, the book sale. Oh. <laughs> May 11th, Saturday, May 11th, is the book drop-off. And basically dropping off good books. We don't want the stuff that's been in Grandma's basement. Sorry. Or Uncle Harry the Chains Motorcar. Right, right. Um, so nice, nice books. We, uh, it will be outside if the weather behaves inside here. If it's not, then on Saturday, May 18th, it's the book sale. Again, outside if it's good weather, inside here if it's not. So we, there's no rain date. It's definitely the, uh, the 18th of May. Um, the books are about $2 a piece, cheaper for kids and paperbacks. But there's always lots of lovely things to come and get your summer reading books. And you say, well, what's the difference? Why can't I just put them in one of those drop boxes? All of the money that the friends receive support the library, library programs. Right. They are an integral part of our operation. All of our, 99% of our programs are not funded by our municipal appropriation. So the friends are the group that support our speakers, summer reading, music, all of those things. So your books really make a big difference. Yep. The big news in my uh, neck of the woods is the library now has a monthly newsletter that's going out. No way. Yeah. Again? Again. Finally? Yay. <laughs> Hopefully you've already received one. If you haven't, you can sign up on the library's website. It's an email newsletter. Or just come talk to one of the friendly faces in the library and we'll get you sorted. But it's a monthly communication that lets you know what programs are going on in the library. Um, new things that are coming, services that you can take advantage of. It's just a way that we're trying to uh, communicate better with what we're doing with uh, the people we're doing it with. Really excited. This has been something that the community has asked for during our strategic plan before you were here, Nicholas. People said, if you're not on Facebook or you're not into social media, how do we know what's going on about the events? So this ability to have a newsletter delivered once a month to your mailbox no excuses. Come to our event and sign up for the newsletter. A really exciting a program that's coming up is Genealogy 101, oh. or How I Found My Grandma. Jeff Scheibe is coming here to talk to us on how to perform genealogical research. It's Thursday, May 9th uh, at 2 o'clock. And I know I talk to a bunch of people in the library who come in to use the library's subscription genealogy resources. And I think having uh, Jeff's uh, background uh, information on a structure and a method to approach will be really helpful to people. I think it's overwhelming to start. I mean, I, I look at it, these people who are really into it, and I think, okay, I can go back a few generations. Where? How? So I think having someone who's 
been through the weeds can tell you how to navigate it, that would be really helpful. Is there a charge for that class? I don't believe that there is. Do we have to register? Uh, no registration. Okay, cool. And where is it? It's right here in the community room. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've done my genealogy and man, is that fascinating. All you the people. More patients than I do. <laughs> all the people that live inside you. Very cool. Ooh, that's kind of creepy. Do I need more guest towels? <laughs> As the new public services librarian here, uh, everyone is free to uh, schedule an appointment with me and bring their devices or their technology problems. Uh, and uh, I will um, walk people through simple things, you know, just uh, a little bit, half an hour on uh, how to be more friendly with your device or how to be less aggravated when you try to do simple things that shouldn't be as complicated as they seem to be. In addition to the drop-in sessions uh, that I do and the scheduled appointments that I do, uh, on the third uh, Tuesday of each month, we have Tech Talk Tuesdays. Uh, each month we'll have a different topic where uh, the people involved choose. They figure out what's the most burning or aggravating or the thing that they're most curious about. And so, um, in May, on the 23rd, Thursday the 23rd, uh, from 2 to 3, we're going to be talking about Libby and Hoopla, or how to get the library's digital offerings uh, onto uh, the devices where you consume your media. If you're 60 years or older, the Born Council on Aging has lots of programming for you. The Bridge Cafe is now open Wednesdays and Thursdays for senior dining from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. The weekly menu is posted on the website and in the front lobby. Chef Jean Lahan prepares delicious soups, salads, sandwiches, entrees, and desserts. Or stop by and pick up a muffin and coffee from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. those same days. Register for your Go Card with Cape Cod RTA on May 8th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Council on Aging. Come in for Coffee Chat May 29th at 9 a.m. in the Bridge Cafe. On May 6th at 1 p.m., attorney Catherine Bean will give a talk along with VNA Nurse on advanced directives. On May 14th, Therapy Gardens presents Garden Talk at 1 p.m. Also on May 14th at 11 a.m., Nancy Frank presents First Ladies with Ties to Massachusetts. There's lots more programming at the Council on Aging. You can see a listing of all their activities by visiting townofborn.com and uh, clicking on the Council on Aging department and then selecting newsletters from the menu on the left. Here's a look at the calendar. The Katomit Schoolhouse is hosting Science at the Schoolhouse on Sundays from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. on May 5th. May 19th and May 26th. Fun experiments for kids and their parents and guardians at the Historic Atomic Schoolhouse. It's for all ages and it's free. Come anytime between 2 and 3.30 to 1200 County Road in Katomit. The Iptoxic Garden Club of Bourne will hold their annual plant and bake sale on Saturday, May 11th from 9.30 a.m. to noon. It will be located at the Pacasset Village Community Building, 314 Barlow's Landing Road. They'll have sun and shade annuals and perennials, some native plants, a limited number of tomato and herb plants, trees and shrubs, and a limited number of Mother's Day's baskets. New this year, they're offering a variety of pre-owned garden tools for sale. The Aptoxic Garden Club will also host two talks in May. One on May 13th at 1 p.m., Plant Care and Gardening Tips for Spring by Mac, Mike Paduk, owner of Lake Crystal Nursery. And then on May 22nd, Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m., the talk is Edibles in Containers. Don't have room or time for a vegetable garden? Kathy Setup, a master gardener, of Cape Cod will show us innovative and creative planters that are beautiful and good to eat. Both of these meetings are held at the Bourne United Methodist Church, 37 Sandwich Road, next to the library. The Aptuxic Garden Club is also hosting its own flower show on Thursday through Saturday, May 30th, 31st, and June 1st from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Briggs McDermott House. 
check out these beautiful and creative flower inspired artworks made by Garden Club members. It's free. On May 18th, the Master Gardener Association of Cape Cod hosts its 25th annual plant sale from 9 a.m. to noon at the Cape Cod Fairgrounds in Falmouth. There's also the Plymouth Patuxent Museum's plant sale. It's held on May 18th, 19th, 25th, and 26th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's their annual spring heirloom plant sale. More than 100 types of heirloom species will be held in the museum's parking lot. The Newcomers and Neighbors Club will hold their annual meeting and dinner on May 21st at 5.30 p.m. at the Pocasset Golf Club, RSVP by May 13th. The cost is $42 for members and $45 for non-members. For more information about this dinner or for more general information about the Born Newcomers, visit bornnewcomers.org. On May 18th, the Buzzards Bay Eagles will hold the third annual Walk With Us, benefiting Toka's friends to raise funds for supporting and training service dogs for military veterans who suffer from PTSD and other difficulties. There will be music, food, and a variety of vendors. That's May 18th, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can sign up at buzzardsbayeagles.com. Here are some wonderful photos taken by area photographers showing the beauty that surrounds us. sure to stay up to date with what's happening in Bourne by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Visit youtube.com and search for Bourne Community TV. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Bourne Review. Happy Mother's Day, and I'll see you next time. The preceding program was underwritten by Barlow's Clam Shack, located at 856 Scenic Highway in Bourne. Barlow's Clam Shack, where the seafood is always fresh.